so my name is uh, Łukasz Wrześniewski. I represent Architecture Center in this team. Uh, I will uh, show at the beginning the, what, what is behind uh, our presentation. We would like, we, we did some preliminary work uh, that will uh, show how to connect the uh, uh, TOGAF and IT for IT together. We, we, we know that the alignment of the standard will can uh, bring uh, big value to uh, both of them. Uh, first part of presentation will be how the enterprise architects can, can cooperate with uh, IT teams that deliver uh, services and how it could drive the better service de delivery. The second part will be some other point of view, so more about how we can uh, use the TOGAF uh, to implement IT for IT to establish this uh, uh, capability uh, driven by IT for IT uh, within the enterprise. Okay, so uh, there is an agenda of our uh, presentation. So first we will give some brief introduction to the TOGAF and IT for IT. Uh, then we will discuss the uh, touch points uh, of these two standards, so how we can connect, so what are the points of connection. Uh, then we will show how to use TOGAF and IT for IT to transform business capabilities within enterprise. Then we will tell a few words about the, some concepts that we would like to work on, like uh, architecture, development, and operations, so how to make the uh, enterprise architecture uh, more agile and how to create architecture-driven development and operations. And then uh, last part will be about the how we can establish this new IT that is driven by IT for IT standard as some reference architecture for IT uh, and TOGAF approach uh, together. Okay, so uh, the brief preview of TOGAF. So I would like to ask the question, uh, who have a deep knowledge about the TOGAF? Yeah? Okay, so I see the most of the audience, uh, so we will. And about the IT for IT, I see most of the member of the How many <laughs> of you know IT for IT? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so, okay, so let's, uh, let me give some brief introduction for this uh, who are uh, new uh, in this uh, TOGAF uh, world. So uh, TOGAF is open group architecture framework, so it's a framework, we can tell that this is one of the world recognized framework now about how to create and establish enterprise architecture within organization. Uh, it supports the usage of uh, other open standards and it's also helped to improve our organization to uh, better achieve the business uh, outcomes, yeah? Uh, this is a TOGAF structure. So TOGAF is a, some, you probably saw this big book, 70, 100 pages. Uh, 700 pages, uh, and uh, it's divided to some specific parts, so it's, it's modular, so it has a one first part, that is uh, part seven about the architecture capability, so it tells how to establish the uh, architecture capability in the organization, so how to uh, hire the team of experienced architects, how to define the processes, how to tailor this to entire enterprise environment, uh, then we have the development method, so part two is the main process, process that tell us how to establish enterprise architecture. This process is supported by the content from part three, so it's about the guidelines and technique that are useful to, us to uh, execute the architecture development process. We have a full uh, model of the content, of the deliverables, of the architecture building blocks, uh, in architecture content framework in the next part. And we have also the continuum and tools, so it's part that discuss the, how to classify different uh, architectural assets and uh, how to put it to the repository, architecture repository. Uh, uh, also, uh, what, what is the main purpose of TOGAF is to transform the, as you can see on this, uh, on this scheme, uh, transform the business vision and driver to some working business capabilities. So going from a vision and, uh, and goals of our stakeholders, to using TOGAF we deliver some specific business capabilities, yeah? And this is the main concept of the capabilities that is behind the TOGAF, so 
uh, we plan the capability increments on people, process, and material dimensions, and then through architecture process, we're describing how this capability is built. So we're describing the business architecture part, information uh, architecture part, application, and technology. And thanks to this description, we can go from the current state that is defined to the target uh, stage that we would like to uh, deliver. Yeah? We're doing gap analysis between this. Is, uh, uh, we have some series of uh, transition architecture. Uh, everything is uh, based on the requirements and some organizational uh, constraints. So here we have the method. So is a process how to deliver the architecture from preliminary phase when we're preparing to uh, use TOGAF. Then we're going through the vision when we're defining what should be the end state. We're defining the vision and how we uh, achieve this vision. Then we're going through the phases B, C, and D. So we're going through all architectural domains uh, when we're describing this architecture, performing gap analysis. Then we're defining the opportunities and solutions. So what solution will implement the architectures? Then it's a migration planning in phase F. Uh, in phase G, we oversee the implementation. So we're checking that the implementation is uh, uh, aligned with the architecture. And in phase change and then it provides some sort of the continuous improvement for the architecture and we're monitoring changes. Uh, of course, the process is driven by requirements. So as you can see in the center, we have the requirement management process that assure that everything what we do is based on the uh, business requirements. Uh, then we have the architecture capability framework. So this is part of this uh, element from this part seven. Uh, when we uh, discussing how to establish governance, uh, what skills people need, uh, and any other resources that are needed to, uh, to, to do the architectural practice. Yeah? Uh, we have model for the repository uh, that defines the, how the repository should look like. Uh, enterprise continuum, so it's a, some classification method. We produce many different assets it's that, that are reusable. Uh, we, can, we can adapt also something for some models from the industry. So this helps us to understand this entire continuum of architectural assets. Okay, so let me give the stage to Sylvain. He will give <coughs> you the introduction to IT for IT, please. Thank you. So introducing uh, IT for IT, I will try to be brief because probably most of you have heard uh, this uh, today uh, a lot of uh, on IT for IT. Uh, so just to remind that IT for IT is um, a new operating model to uh, run the business of IT. Uh, and so it's based on two main components. One is uh, the IT value chain, which you can see uh, here, with this uh, four value stream, strategy portfolio, requirement to deploy, request to fulfill, and detect to correct. So which means we, we, we want to do a plan, build, deliver, uh, and run. And uh, we have supporting activities, uh, which are generally not specific to the IT functions, but who will help uh, the, the value stream to uh, operate uh, efficiently. Uh, and so the other part of uh, the other element of uh, IT for IT is this uh, reference architecture that uh, will uh, build and implement the functionalities that are necessary to, uh, to run IT. So one of the core concepts uh, that we, uh, that is part of the uh, the IT for IT is uh, the service lifecycle concept. So our IT for IT is really based and built upon the service uh, lifecycle concept. And the service lifecycle will streamline the development from strategy to portfolio, from the, the concept of the service to uh, the, um, the reality of the service, going through uh, three main stages. First one is um, the status is the conceptual service model. Uh, once we are going to uh, design the service and to deploy the service, we are in the logical service model. And finally, the one which is implemented into the production environment is the real-life service model. So the, uh, the goal of uh, IT for IT is to maintain the, the relationship and to maintain the, the trustability uh, going down from conceptual to, reali to re realized service and also backwards from what is in the production environment to be able to... Uh, to get all the metrics and to uh, link these metrics to the conceptual service. 
So this shows um, the, um, the reference architecture. So this is a global view of the reference architecture. Uh, we call it uh, the level one. And uh, what you can see here is uh, the, the goal, um, control, un unless in traditional IG where we are built around process and built around the product that will run the process here, what we uh, uh, design is functional components and data objects which are independent from processes and uh, from product. Even if afterwards this functional component will lead to a product, to a, uh, but uh, we want that th this architecture be uh, completely uh, independent. This is um, one of the, the main deliverable of um, the, uh, the IT for IT reference architecture is service. So we are service centric, it's a service centric framework. And um, what you can see here is this blue uh, uh, circle as the data object, as a data object which allows us to uh, precisely identify the different states of the um, service through its life cycle. So you can see we have uh, uh, seven different uh, objects with relationship between these objects that allows us to uh, very precisely follow the, the service life cycle. So what is our intention in this presentation? What we wanted is to uh, show you, it's uh, our vision, <laughs> it's not the, the open group, uh, it's our vision of um, how we can use both standard together. Uh, so the goal is not to fuse uh, the standard, uh, but uh, really to uh, show you, because we know that there are some differences, we, we, we will see there are some differences in terminology, but uh, really uh, we think that you may use, enterprise can efficiently use the, the two standards together. And this is uh, what we are, we are going to show now. So first, looking at the touch points. So the good news is both have the word architecture in the name. So we, IT for IT is a reference architecture. The GAF is an enterprise architecture framework. Um, of course, the, um, the ultimate goal of these uh, two standards is to have uh, uh, services uh, uh, into a production environment, so services that are in a, an operation mode and that will uh, help the enterprise to, um, to do its job. The difference are that in TOGAF, the scope of TOGAF is enterprise-wide, so we are designing architecture for the whole enterprise. IT for IT is dedicated to the IT function, to the IT function. So the reference architecture is really dedicated to the IT function in the enterprise. In terms of deliverable also, um, TOGAF, the deliverable of TOGAF is, uh, is to uh, enable business capability. So we want to transform business capabilities uh, in order to support and enable the business strategy. In IT for IT, what I said, the, the main delivery, what we want to deliver is IT services and IT services that will enable the business operations, okay? So in terms of conceptual models, um, yesterday I, I was speaking with, uh, with a guy from Modelio and, just, uh, and he says, yes, uh, Modelio, we support uh, uh, Archimate, uh, we support B B BPMN, we support UML, and he says, now we will have to support IT for IT. And I said, no, the good news <laughs> is IT for IT is not a new meta model. IT for IT is just uh, a new architecture that is described using mainly Archimate. So it's not, it's not a new meta model. We speak in IT for IT, we speak about class model, which could be confusing, but we will see that it's not a new meta model. TOGAF provide a core content meta models with extensions. And I will show you that we use part of this, uh, this uh, meta model uh, concept. Of course, there are some difference in entities. So the way, uh, mainly in terminology, uh, the way we name the, the, the concept uh, between uh, Archimate, we speak about, for example, uh, uh, building blocks in architecture. Uh, we speak about functional components in uh, IT uh, for IT, so there are some differences. There are also some differences 
in how we describe the relationship between the concept and uh, of, to facilitate uh, the, the use of both standard will probably uh, benefit from aligning the terminology together and this is something that the organization can do as uh, when, when they are uh, implement IT for IT or, or when they implement a GAF. So this is uh, just to show you the, the core content meta model of um, TOGAF. And just to show you, in IT for IT, we mainly use as object three of these objects, mainly data entity and application components, and in some way also business service is the thing that we are, we are using from, uh, from the TOGAF uh, core content meta model. So I could explain also the same concept that we use from Archimate, which are exactly the, the same concept we use uh, in Archimate. On the other hand, in IT for IT, we speak about level of class model. So we have three levels of class model that are part of the IT for IT uh, standard, I would say, normative part. And we have two other levels, four and five, which are specific to uh, the, the vendor and the tool vendor. So in the, in the three first level, level one and level two and level three, for TOGAF people that manipulate the concept of views, it's just views describing different architecture. So we have three levels of architecture that are defined. The, the first one is a global view. The, the level two is a more detailed view that will focus on value stream. And the third level is many views that are defined in Archimate language that will concentrate sometimes on data objects, sometimes on functional components, sometimes on the relationship between uh, all these uh, components together. So, um, as uh, Lucas said, so we have two ways to look at how we can use uh, IT for IT and TOGAF together. So, one way is in uh, transforming uh, business capabilities what will be the interactions between IT for IT and TOGAF. The other way that uh, Lucas will present afterwards is if I want to use TOGAF and the ADM methods to transform an IT capability, what will be, uh, how will I use the, the IT for IT reference architecture? So this first one, just a reminder, sorry, but <laughs> for the people who knows uh, TOGAF and the ADM, so remember that in order to transform uh, an IT, uh, a business capability, uh, we will uh, go through the, the ADM cycle, be begin with the A phase defining the vision, the initial requirements. Phase B, C, D that you can see here will be uh, focused on developing the architecture, so B, C, D, at different level, the business level, at uh, the information system level and technology level. Phase E will be where we define the solution. So we choose a solution and we define the roadmap to, uh, for the transformation. And phase F, this is where we'll identify the, the project and, uh, that will deliver the, and that will uh, really uh, conduct the transformation. Phase G is a phase where we will oversee the implementation phase. So trying to ensure that the implementation project will uh, be in, in line with uh, what we design as an enterprise architect. And phase H will uh, ensure that the, um, the architecture that we produce is still uh, valid uh, in, in time. So it's a sort of maintenance uh, part of the, of the cycle. So what we try to do is to um, try to understand during this ADM cycle what will be the relationship with, with what we found in, uh, in the IT for IT. So I said that IT for IT is focused on uh, services, delivering services, and TOGAF is uh, focused on uh, delivering an architecture, even if the ultimate goal for both standards is to uh, deliver, of course, a real architecture that provides services in a real environment. But in an intermediate phase, what, what TOGAF will produce is, um, is a description of the architecture and what IT4IT uh, will produce is starting from a service portfolio for 
identification of a certain number of services uh, implements these services into the production environment. So what, I, I, what we wanted to show here is that it is in the phase B, C, and D where we are going to identify building blocks that can be candidates to become services. So the, the business architecture will probably allow us to identify business services. Information system architecture will allow us to identify IT services. And technology architecture will, will allow us to identify infrastructure services. And afterwards, this will be part of the service portfolio. And the service portfolio, for those who know IT for IT, is in the strategy to portfolio. This is the starting point of the service lifecycle. The next phase of the ADM cycle so will help us to identify solutions and define the solution roadmaps and finally the, the project portfolio that will run the transformation. So um, if we uh, try now to understand the interactions that we can have between the value stream, the four value stream and the ADM, so of course we will find the same uh, interactions between uh, phase B, C, and D, you can see here, and the strategy to portfolio um, value stream. So this here, this is where we want the, all the services that are in identified to be part of our service portfolio. When we are in phase E and F, this is probably uh, more linked, it's not a one-to-one -one link, of course, it's not a one-to-one -one interactions. But in the requirement to deploy, this is where we are going to, uh, to have the project, the, the initiative of, uh, of the project, the requirements, detailed requirements, the design of the service, the identification of solutions, and this is why this uh, requirement to deploy is uh, linked to phase E, where we choose the solution, phase F, where we identify the project, and phase G, where we design uh, the service in, uh, in detail. Phase G is also a link to the request to fulfill. Why? Because the request to fulfill is the value stream that will implement, that will deploy most of service components into the production environment. The last one, detect to correct, is uh, in some way, uh, detect to correct is the maintenance of the service. And as I said, uh, phase H is also the phase, this is the maintenance of the architecture. So we'll have a dialogue probably between the, the people from uh, the architecture uh, and the people from uh, the detect to correct phase. If I go a little more into details, so here I, I am at, at the functional component level, and see uh, here you can see that the main component that is involved in, uh, in the ADM interaction, as you can imagine, is called the enterprise architecture component. Uh, so the enterprise architecture component will have a, a role of uh, uh, taking the information from uh, the phase BCD, BCD, as I said, and to uh, populate the service portfolio. The service portfolio component uh, will uh, be part of uh, uh, be in relationship with uh, phase AE to Id identify solutions and, uh, and define the roadmap. Uh, and afterwards, uh, we'll have uh, the service design, the proposal component, which identifies the, the project and also the, um, the project component, of course, because uh, the phase G is mainly uh, realized through project. Um, so as you can see, most of the relations between ADM phases and the functional components are in the strategy to portfolio, um, a little in the requirement to deploy, but mainly in the strategy to, portf to portfolio uh, value stream, which is uh, normal. Of course, phase G, as it is implementation, all the rest of the, the IT for IT, I mean all the, the request to deployment, uh, the request to fulfill and detect to correct will be uh, in, uh, mainly in phase G and H. So if we want to look uh, a little more carefully at this enterprise architecture component, so the enterprise architecture component will uh, make the link between the business strategy, 
and, uh, and the service portfolio, as I said. And, and you can see here the main uh, functions of this uh, component, which is to uh, develop target state business information application technology. So this is quite uh, what we can find in, uh, in, in the ADM, uh, phase B, C, D, and uh, to, uh, to develop the IT roadmaps based on the, on the business roadmap. Okay, so I will Thank you, keep yeah, telling to uh, Okay, so and uh, as uh, Sylvain showed in previous slides, we define some concept that we can use this standard together because there is a lot of uh, discussion about how to improve enterprise architecture approach, how to move, uh, how to move to the agile way. Yeah, and uh, our idea is that uh, the co uh, connection, integration of these two standards to and show people to how to use it together. Yeah, I don't talk about the putting it to the one standard, but to use it as a two in our organization, uh, can assure something that we call uh, the architecture development and operations, so like architecture DevOps, yeah, or continuous architecture delivery. Yeah? So we're showing that using the TOGAF and IT for IT together, we can continuously deliver architecture and drive the development in iteration in some structured architecture Way. And this is also a really big chance to the, uh, improve the uh, practice uh, of enterprise uh, architecture. Yeah? Now I will move to the next topic. So it's a different point of view on the uh, using TOGAF and IT for IT. So uh, how to use the TOGAF and IT for IT to, to transform the IT capability within the enterprise. Yeah? So, how we can improve our IT capability, so this IT area uh, in enterprise using these two uh, standards. So as I saw, said before, the TOGAF uh, transferred, uh, to transformed the vision uh, to the, some working capabilities. So we have from one side the IT for IT as a, some uh, reference architecture, which we, we tell that uh, is a uh, reference business architecture for IT. And from other side, we have IT business capabilities. So we would like to use the uh, IT for IT, in this case, as some reference model, how the, IT, how the modern IT should look like in all the uh, enterprises. And we uh, here map the uh, IT for IT to the TOGAF structure. So first, we reflecting the use of IT for IT as a some uh, part of the architecture capability. So we need, for example, some sp specific principles that reflect IT for IT, specific people with specific skill set uh, based on TOGAF and IT for IT. Uh, we also reflecting the ADM, so architecture development method as a way how to uh, establish uh, organization, IT organization that is, that is uh, aligned with IT for IT uh, reference model. Then we have some guideline. We're using TOGAF guideline to support this implementation. Then we're reflecting the IT for IT as a part of the architecture content. There is a reference model. We can use our reference model to create our uh, architecture. Uh, then we also reflecting this as a part of the continuum. We're putting some architectural uh, asset based on IT for IT. Uh, to our architecture uh, repository. And this here, we have the concept of continuum that shows the different level of the uh, enterprises. So here, we, we uh, decide to define that, that IT for IT is a, some sort of common system architecture. So, so it's a common reference model to, that we can use to establish any IT capability within any enterprise. And also in IT for IT, we have uh, level four and five. So this vendor specific architecture that are not part of the standard, but they could be defined uh, in alignment with this uh, standard level one and three. So the solutions that support the uh, IT for IT uh, reference architecture and the vendor specific solution that, that we can use to implement this architecture building block that are designed in this level one and three vendor agnostic uh, reference architecture. Then we're reflecting the IT for IT in the architecture uh, repository. So 
we're using in the reference library, the IT4IT as a set of reference models. That is a good example uh, how the IT, uh, how the architecture for IT capability should look like. Uh, then we're reflecting in the landscape, set of architecture building blocks that are designed uh, like based on IT for IT, so like for example some functional components and data object that we, that we have in the uh, IT for IT. And also in solution repository, we will put the all solutions that are aligned with IT for IT. I know that the uh, open group IT for IT forum works on the some uh, certification accreditation program for the uh, solution that are based on IT for IT. Okay, and finally the process, so how to use the ADM to implement uh, IT for IT. So first of all, we're reflecting the IT for IT as a part of the uh, architecture capability. So for example, we can define the principle in the part preliminary, uh, phase preliminary, like IT is a service broker uh, that is also promoted by IT for IT. Uh, we're defining the vision in phase A, how the IT should look like. Uh, then in phases B, C, and D, we're using the IT for IT as a reference architectural model to design our uh, architecture. In phase uh, E, we will be selecting the specific solution that are aligned with the level four and five of uh, IT for IT to implement the uh, architecture building blocks. Uh, in F, we will detail plan the migration, uh, how to migrate our current IT stays to this future that is aligned with IT for IT. Uh, in phase G, during the implementation governance of the architecture, we will use uh, IT for IT to provide the compliance of the architecture. Yeah? And then in H, we will be monitoring what we can still improve, what we can, uh, what we can change to work better. Okay, and some sort of the summary. So, from one side, we have the TOGA framework that is currently leading uh, uh, enterprise architecture framework. Uh, the IT for IT architecture provides the guidance how to structure the elements to strengthen the IT service delivery. And we think that these two standards have the uh, aspiration to improve the agility and effectiveness of each enterprise. So we think that when we ensure that the standard can work together uh, in the best way. We can help uh, many organizations to improve their IT operations, to achieve their goals, uh, and, uh, uh, and also we will uh, help to improve the practice about the enterprise architecture to give uh, the, agile way to this, uh, the agile way to this practice. Yeah, so thank you very much. Thank you.